talk about karmaless actions. Yes. Uh, we know that not all actions create karma, but uh, we understand only actions supported by volition create karma. That is yeah. one side, yeah. one area. Yeah. Another area is why do arahants, Pacheka Buddhas and Samma Sambuddhas uh, not create karma? I think they are also karmaless actions. Yeah, they have mm -hmm. finished their uh, karma journey. Yeah. They are not creating because fresh karmas do not base themselves on an understanding of an I. You see, when I have this understanding of an I, uh, anatta, yeah, when there is no I performing the action, I don't create ownership of the action. The action has been performed. A, 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 a Buddha has helped so and so an arahant has helped so and so, but the Buddha or an arahant doesn't see an I doing it. The, and since there is no I doing it, there is nothing that the action can hold itself on to. Uh, in the case of uh, any of the arahants, there, there is an action, but there is no doer of the action. The action is there, but the action doesn't create more karma for somebody who believes in an I. Now, as long as we are put to jhana, so long as we believe in an I, then the actions will be with karma. But otherwise, no. Now folks, so much to dig into. My next question to you is that uh, when we discuss about karma, it has ancillary subjects, connected subjects. One is cause and effect. Yes. Paticca samuppa. Yes. And second could be ethicization, ethical aspects of karma. All right. Third is, I would say, rebirth. Fourth is, there is a fundamentally conflict in understanding. The Buddha says, we can take I, me, myself, anath. Yes. If there is not self, who is doing karma? So once again, I would say, Patisamuppada context, Buddhist ethics, rebirth, and uh, not self, a teaching. Yeah. You could sort of uh, delineate on any of these aspects of how do these aspects uh, uh, fit in with uh, the Buddhist karma concept. How does, because uh, let me explain to you a little bit. Yeah. When I do a karma supported by evolution, mm. that creates karma pala. Yes. Result. Result. That means cause and effect. Yes. When I do karma, uh, karma means definitely moral, ethical yes. aspects. So yes. definitely I'm creating ethical. Uh, life yes. here and after. Because of the karmas, because of the process of karma, I mean, supported by the different origination, mm -hmm. that creates next life over the course of many uh, lifetimes. Mm -hmm. And finally, about the fundamental idea that the Buddha says uh, that we have to understand anatta mm -hmm. of any phenomenon. Mm -hmm. For somebody, it might be something like, all right, if there's nobody if I can't take if I can't think consider myself as nobody no I no me no myself then who who is doing karma so how do we look at these ancillary subjects uh, mm. with the karma I think there are a lot of misconceptions uh, mm. around these mm. uh, four areas mm. uh, before we jump into uh, yes. those specific uh, aspects which you mentioned earlier yeah um, you don't need to explain everything <laughs> just, go for, just go for a couple of things yeah. as you think uh, to me, the way I look at it is, all these things you said, there are two levels of uh, the Buddha's teaching, the Samutti Satcha and the Paramatta Satcha. At the Samutti level, which the Buddha had to handle when dealing with Puttujanas, when dealing with people who saw, like we do, and I, and you can't run away from that, all right? But the Buddha and the Arahants, they saw things from a different perspective. So here, the Puttujana, that's all of us, the Buddha had to talk to us in a different language. So what he uses is what we call the conventional language. In the conventional mode, there is an I, there is somebody doing this action, somebody receiving the results of that action, and so on and so forth. But these are only convenient means to discuss a higher aim. And the higher aim that the Buddha discovered and which Arahants fall into is the Paramatha Satcha, the transcendental truth. Those transcendental truths 
do not fall into this category. Uh, this category of the convention, all based on a um, uh, uh, convenient uh, expedient in order to describe the situation we are in. But we cannot remain there. As long as we remain there, we are put to jana. But when we develop our understanding, then then we go into the paramata satcha where all of this becomes irrelevant it's 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 like a mirage and the, in the mirage you see things you see things there is water there is this thing but it's not there nirvana means awakening to the lack of that mirage when that mirage is not there, it is not that the mirage has been removed. As is, it, it never was there in the first place. That's why we use the word awakening. The Buddha was awakened to this higher truth. So to answer your question, we need to talk in terms, use this language in order to explain a higher language is very, very difficult. So we need even to transcend language which is where meditation, purification of the mind comes in. Uh, the tortoise and the fish, you see, the, 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 the tortoise yeah, disappears and comes back and tells the fish that he has been to land and the fish says, no, I haven't been, I, there's no such thing, there is no such thing. To the puttujana, he cannot understand nirvana and the dichotomy between paramata satcha and samuti satcha, one is an expedient means and the other is the ultimate reality. Wonderful.